Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Chiropractic Student Podcast. Today we have another one of my close friends, Sean Chan. Um, He's up in Scotland at the moment working from the Alba Clinic in Dundee. Thank you, Sean, for coming on the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Happy to help and speak what I can speak, you know. Yeah, it's really nice to get in touch again as well with you being so far away. And um, it's just nice to reconvene and touch base again. And help yeah, the students. Definitely. Lovely. Definitely. Definitely. Cool. So the first question I ask everyone is just how did you get into chiropractic? What is your journey? Okay. So you know, I probably have said this a hundred times since starting and finishing chiropractic school, but mm-hmm. I have a little bit of a different story into chiropractic than I think a lot of other people do. I don't have the whole cured by chiropractic and then wanted to be a chiropractor kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um I finished school and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And I knew that I liked science. I knew that I liked people. I wanted to work with people, around people. Like the worst fear in my life was sitting in an office for nine to five. Like I couldn't do it. Yeah. So because I didn't know what I wanted to do, I started to do a general science course, biology, chemistry, physics, all that stuff. Yeah. And really enjoyed biology like that was no issue for me and um, everything else I really really struggled with I learned pretty quickly that academically I wasn't the best I mean I knew enough to get by but I wasn't like excelling academically um, and then when it came to my third year of science my general science course I was really really struggling and I ended up failing one of my last modules so I was in a position where I had to either resit my entire year or basically drop out of college. Um, Mm. So it was a real, really, really difficult summer. And me and my partner were, you know, we were talking a lot about it and what I wanted to do because I didn't want to use my general science degree. I just wanted to complete it. Yeah. Um, And she was going to a chiropractor at the time and her and her mom actually were having a conversation about what the hell I should be doing with my life. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And they'd actually just uh, said, why doesn't Sean just go and see you go and get adjusted and see what it's all about. We think that he might like it. I was like, cool. Um, so she had an appointment. I went to go see her get adjusted and just watching how somebody could affect somebody else without drugs, without surgery, like all that stuff that mm. obviously we know as chiropractors now to be the main reason. But to me as a fresh faced person without knowing anything about chiropractic, it was just, it was a little bit mind blowing, which was, which was pretty cool. Um, so I saw her get adjusted once and then she had another appointment a couple of weeks after and I went to see that again and then from that point on I was like yeah this is something that I can do and to be honest at that time I still didn't have a clue what chiropractic was you know mm-hmm. it was just, I just seen somebody do something awesome and I was like I want to do that um, nice. yeah I had a similar so yeah. sort of journey in like it wasn't, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't me who had the miraculous I had a treatment yeah but it was my girlfriend at the time who was having yeah. some like kidney pains and back issues who saw a chiropractor yeah. explain to them we fixed the cause not the symptoms and yeah. like just a light bulb went off in my head and I was like that makes sense yeah cool anyway so yeah, yeah. so you so you yeah you have that experience what's next <laughs> well then with it like within a month I was enrolled in chiropractic school ready <laughs> to start like it was such a quick turnaround oh awesome um but because it was such a quick turnaround, I think my start to chiropractic was a little bit unconventional in the sense that I probably went through my first and second year without truly understanding like what chiropractic's all about. Mm-hmm. I knew the basics. I knew the whole thing of like, you know, we treat the body, we don't, we, we treat the cause, we don't treat the symptoms, all that kind of stuff. But I didn't really know what it was all about. So it was only later on in, in my chiropractic journey that I really kind of dug deep into it and yeah, that's how I kind of got into chiropractic school. But okay. well, I have niche. I have niche as my partner to thank for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, like I wouldn't have got through third and fourth year without my current partner Sally. So, thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> so you touched upon it there. Like it works great. I'm going to go into my next question. So you said yeah. you you didn't truly understand chiropractic until you started diving deeper, and you said yeah. that happened towards the latter stage of your course, like maybe year three, year four. What yeah. did you do there? Like, so students are going to be in the exact same position. What did you do to kind of basically understand and get that passion for chiropractic? 
again, I mean, I feel like my life is a whole load of coincidences put together. So mm-hmm. um, it worked out pretty well for me in the sense that I was really struggling again with just like motivation, I guess. I mean, I was motivated to do the course. I really enjoyed it, all that stuff. But I think there was just something missing from what I was doing. Um, and I just started like looking stuff up online, uh, watching videos. I know it's not always the best resource, but you know, mm-hmm. YouTube videos of chiropractors. And I just found a, a few that really I suppose, resonated really well with me. Yeah. And it just turned into a thing where I started just talking about chiropractic more within my own friend circle in school. And as we started talking about it more, like, oh, like I've seen this guy do this adjustment and I've seen, you know, like, oh, have you seen this person doing this? Or what do you think about these types of adjustments or the way this person speaks? And then suddenly the people around me were like, oh, yeah, actually, I've been on that course or, (laughs) oh, yeah, I saw that video as well. And it's just suddenly became a little group of us that were really interested in the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then we just started to go, right, well, we're always talking about it. Let's actually figure some stuff out a little bit more. Let's start training let's start working together let's start doing stuff together because it was for all of us it was really difficult to do it on our own yeah so I think yeah sorry go on well I was just gonna say so the sort of things that you were all doing together you say you were watching videos and and bits like that yeah in terms of resources like is there anything that you would recommend as you're just starting out first first port of call any any of those resources that you first found that you would like to share with us that that sort of gave you that first yeah. step into it? Yeah, well, I mean, from the point of view of like, oh my God, that looks cool. I mean, you can watch Adjusting Ninjas, Kairos, mm-hmm. like all those videos, like Brett Jones has hundreds of videos online and they're just ridiculously awesome to watch. He's the guy that I was like, that's what I want to do. Like all this other stuff about chiropractic, I knew like the science, you know, like the, the microbiology behind it and all that kind of stuff, all the stuff that you never actually use in practice. But when I seen other people adjust like Brett and like Darren Murphy, even people like Jason Worrell and stuff like that on YouTube, when I seen them do their adjustments, it like that's when something switched in my head and I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to adjust like that. I want to change people's lives in that way. Yeah, that's how I and got it into just, it. It just completely flipped for me. And then again, like my life works out with coincidences, but uh, a good friend of ours, Carl, he happened to, you know, be training a lot with Cairo, uh, Kairos Training Culture. And through that, we, me and him just started to dive deeper together through it. I mean, he helped me so much throughout chiropractic school in the sense that, we were training a lot together and he knew a lot of people and he knew a lot of things that I didn't know and then vice versa as well. So we kind of really helped each other along, along with a couple of other students that, and that's how we kind of got started with Kairos in school, you know? Awesome. I mean, yeah, like go out and find what you like. I did exactly the same. I was watching videos online. I was obsessed with Brett and I was like, Oh, this is so cool. (laughs) I had no idea what Kairos training culture was or even if it existed. I sent yeah. this video to Terry in my third, like I think it was either end of second year or early third year. I sent this video yeah. to Terry and I was like, oh my gosh, have you seen this guy? And Terry just goes, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> or you're training this. And I was like, yeah. and that's how I got into it. And then obviously it yeah. was you, Carl, um, obviously Terry and Nico and the, the other people who were basically helping run it. And it was just it was like you say a coincidence how I was just obsessed with this guy online I was like wow how yeah. do I learn to adjust that sent it to one of my buddies at uni yeah. and then it just was like <laughs> oh yeah we do that by the way yeah we so cool. spiral out of control from there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um cool so basically just finding going out looking up obviously within reason I'm not here I'm not going to endorse any ring dingers that's definitely yeah well yeah definitely not. some really good like um what would be the word like principled uh, very specific yeah. adjusting um obviously yeah, online definitely. you can see some really good gonstead stuff and well i was just gonna i was just gonna mention that because yeah. obviously for me and you like we do the kairos stuff quite a bit and like that's the kind of the way mm-hmm. we adjust as well but i mean there's so much more out there there's people that are awesome thompson adjusters there's people that are awesome gonstead adjusters and like the 
the scope in chiropractic is so wide that like everybody should just kind of go out and find what works really well for them because I would I would say to people as well my adjusting even though like I train it and I work on it all day long it might not be the best for somebody else mm -hmm. so there will be another chiropractor out there that has you know trained Gonstead he's an amazing Gonstead adjuster and he might be the person that they need to go and see you know and I think for students to also understand that it's not just one way or no way there's so many different ways to practice and there's so many different ways to adjust that it's really an open book you can go and learn so much and I would just push everybody to learn as much as they can yeah there's so much out there and that's brilliant because people don't understand people genuinely think diversified is like one of the only things and yeah. then people at McTimony think it's McTimony and diversified or maybe yeah, exactly. like a toggle in there and it's like there are hundreds of techniques yeah um, yeah so it, and yeah even within those techniques there's hundreds of <laughs> sub techniques or different ways of doing that like you can spiral out of control yeah but there's so much to learn and like anybody that's not continually continuously learning is is not growing anyway so yeah even though the students are you know a bit overwhelmed sometimes i know i was definitely overwhelmed even when i started looking into this stuff i was like oh shit how am i going to learn all this by the time i graduate like yeah. you don't you like nobody knows all this stuff when they graduate nobody and if they say they do they're probably lying <laughs> either to themselves or to everybody else <laughs> yeah yeah well, that's the thing. How are you supposed to study, get good grades and become a principled chiropractor, like learning all the philosophy, going to seminars yeah. on weekends, earning a living, potentially like some a lot yeah. of people have to work whilst they're at uni. And it's like, yeah. how am I supposed to do all of this? And one of my major things is procrastination as well. Like, yeah. I have to delete Instagram every now and then because I have a real <laughs> hate relationship with it because I can yeah. sit for hours and just scroll. And yeah. waste waste time where two hours I could have easily read read loads of a book or yeah done some research or done a little bit of work that I needed to do or just practice and train or anything do a workout it's it can be quite a toxic environment and if you actually look at a lot of students message me and they're like how do you have time for all this and I'm like how long do you reckon you genuinely spend on Facebook tiktok instagram yeah. snapchat all that other rubbish a day yeah and i would easily put the average person above above probably two hours yeah easy yeah and that's like two hours every day so in a working week that's 10 hours 10 hours is yeah. probably how long it should take for you to read a book yeah yeah so yeah i, I mean even if you half that time like that's five hours a week that yeah. you could be doing something way more productive than exactly. seeing what friend of yours got engaged this week or <laughs> who had a baby you know yeah and but it's easy and it's comforting and having that motivation to go out find what you like and learn more about it yeah that's one of the things that yeah got us going yeah. cool um so some advice like for some students have you got any wisdom bits of wisdom some lovely bits of advice for our students out there well, as wise as I like to think I am, you know. <laughs> An um, old wise man. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the, the thing for me is I can only speak from what helped me and, and where I was and connecting with people that had similar principles or that were just interested in the same stuff. Like if you're in first or second year of uni and you're getting thrown all this information, you're not going to have a set of principles about chiropractic. I mean, you might. Don't get me wrong, but most people won't. Most people won't understand the deep rooted the core of what chiropractic is all about. So it's not really about being friends with people that are as vitalistic as you are or anything like that. It's just about people that have the same interests. Mm -hmm. And once you get into that, like I think the people around you really, really help. And I speak from a place where I probably isolated myself a little bit in first and second year when I was yeah. in school. And probably struggled a little bit because of that. Um, I mean, I made up for it at the end, but I definitely struggled at the start. So I think just having the people around you that can kind of spur you on or that, you know, if you have an interest and then the people around you have an interest, suddenly that just turns into something. Like, like again, I can only speak from my own experience, but when me and a few others got together and then we started training as, as Kairos and then suddenly more people wanted to join us and then suddenly it became... A thing where we were training every week or twice a week and 
it blossomed from there like you joined us and stuff like that yep. and it just came out of pure interest that we had with each other so i would just say that like if you find a group of people that have even just interests it can really take you somewhere else you know mm. um the conversations one, that you, sorry the, the yeah. conversations that you start having as well not only just training yeah exactly when you guys start training with each other the conversations you start having are a lot deeper a lot more meaningful you start questioning yeah. everything like yeah. even bjdd like the old school stuff you start to question it and it's like god yeah. were they doing that right and all this other stuff it's exactly the conversation gets so much deeper and you start learning from that rather than talking about yeah it's fun to talk about football every now and then or whatever but yeah when you start having those meaningful principled philosophical conversations you grow so much from those and learn yeah. other people's opinions and, and point of view yeah i i love those those are my favorite times when before training we would do our movement yeah. we do our breath work we do our meditation and then we would just talk for like half yeah. an hour and i would yeah. get so much from that it was, it well, was the, the, yeah. the, the thing with that as well is that you wouldn't believe the amount of times that i've had a conversation in practice that has stemmed from what we have talked about in training, yeah. like just random stuff that we would talk about, about the adjustment or about, you know, somebody's movement pattern, like, oh, if they walk that way, does that mean something in relation to how their body's presenting? And then suddenly you'd see it in practice like 10 times mm -hmm. in a week. And suddenly you're like, oh my God, we were literally just talking about this. Mm -hmm. it, it's crazy how that works out. Um, but yeah, I, I, for anybody listening that doesn't know what we're talking about, we are talking about Kairos training culture a lot today. So. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's just basically, because that, that's yeah. our that's our experience, though. That, that's what we did when we were in school, and that's that set us up pretty well. Um, the yeah. the, thing, the one bit of advice that I would really stress to any student, especially the ones that are kind of in their third and fourth year that they are coming into clinic or they are just finishing their final year, is that they need to understand that they won't be perfect coming straight out of uni. I think a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves and my, uh, myself included to be like this perfect chiropractor as soon as I graduate, because mm -hmm. I need to be perfect when I go to get my first job because otherwise nobody's going to hire me. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not that straightforward and you won't be perfect. Like school is not designed to make you a perfect chiropractor. It's to make you a competent chiropractor It's to give you the tools that you need so that you can go and then become a perfect chiropractor as close to perfect as humanly possible. Um, but if you're pushing yourself to do as much as you can all the time, you, will, you, you won't be perfect, but you will set yourself up much better than everybody else mm -hmm. to then go into practice. You know, like there's so many different things in actual practice. Like you've got your adjusting, you've got your care plans, your communication with patients, recognizing different patterns. Like all that stuff that you don't really learn in school that you you can only learn with experience and with practice that you can yeah. train it and you can try as hard as you can but experience there is no substitute for experience and the other thing as well is employers know this like no employer is going to be looking at you to be a perfect chiro if you're coming straight out of school they, yeah they don't expect it they, they expect to have to train you up and have to teach you and have to support you in some way but if you go in already being a masterful adjuster or really great with your communication, that's a massive tick in any employer's book because that's one thing they don't have to worry about anymore. But they will help you with everything else that, that you don't have. But if you have that one thing, which is, which is why I say, like for me, I was training the adjustment all day long, every day. Well, as much as I could if I didn't procrastinate. But the adjustment was everything for me. And it still is to an extent. But... When I left uni, I knew I could adjust, but I didn't know how to recommend a care plan of twice a week for four weeks without sounding, I don't know, pretentious or something like that. Like I had to learn all that kind of stuff when I graduated and when I got into practice and there's a steep learning curve. But if you do everything you can beforehand, you set yourself up really nicely for getting into practice and then diving even deeper into chiropractic. Yeah. And, and as, as a byproduct of reaching out to all of these people and connecting with the people around you, you learn those communication skills and you learn the skills that they already know. There's yeah. everyone knows something that you don't and you can learn something from everyone. Like exactly. regardless of what you might think yourself to be the most 
best I don't know, the smartest person in the world and know everything someone yeah. out there will know something that you don't and it's yeah. really rich to understand that and ground yourself and understand that you can take something from everyone and learn from them and the communication process is going to help you in the future and set you up like you just said yeah awesome man and, yeah um yeah have you got I, any I like other there's... advice for students Oof. more advice for students i mean i wish i had something like this when i was a student like i mean yeah. you're doing awesome stuff setting this up for for students <laughs> that's exactly I mean, why i did it i wish yeah. i had something like this um, well, well this is the thing and i think there's more and more people like you that are doing things all the time for students and by students for students mm -hmm. and i think if you observing is one of the biggest things that you can do like just going to clinics and observing you see how places run you see how people work you can see what you like and what you don't like mm -hmm. like when, when i finished school i was like oh i want to be an open plan adjuster adjusting you know 300 people a minute like that was my mindset when mm -hmm. i finished school and then when i actually got into practice and i was like working out of one room yes i was you know seeing a lot of people and it was still relatively high volume it was still working out of one room and i actually realized that i really enjoy just being able to speak to somebody in a closed room context like yeah not with another person lying next to them on the bench or anything like that and my mentality on chiropractic and how I want to practice has changed about 10 times since I've come out of school. So that's good. That like, shows that you're growing and shows that you're yeah, open to change. Exactly. And, and that's the thing for any student coming out, like just be open to, to learning as much as you can. Like nobody knows everything and it's impossible, but you will learn something from everyone. So just be open to learning because I mean, a lot of the time, and you know, everybody can kind of come out of school having a bit of a chip on their shoulder or, you know, thinking that they know a lot or thinking that they don't know anything. Like it swings both ways, but everybody's in the same boat when they come out of school. So don't put that pressure on yourself. Yeah. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. I love yeah. that. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, train to be the best that you can, but understand that you won't be perfect and that's okay. Nice. And so let's uh, have a bit of a rewind and go back to sean in year one year two yeah if you could tell yourself one thing just one not even necessarily a bit of advice if you could just tell yourself one thing and make it apply to most students or most people out there what would be the what would be the one catalyst one pivotal thing that you could say to yourself that might I don't know, resonate, might ground you, might make you grow, uh, anything, what, what would it be? I think for me, understanding that I might not, well, if I'm speaking to myself, I would say you might not be the most academically gifted, but you need to still work hard at that mm -hmm. and push yourself with the academics so that you can then shine in the practical side of things. You know, I, I found it, not easy because I had to work hard, but I found it, it was a natural process for me to learn how to adjust in a practical sense. It wasn't natural for me to learn molecular biology. But at the same time, for me, the advice I would give myself is to, you know, knuckle down and work hard at the stuff that you're not good at so that you can keep thriving at the stuff that you are good at. Because it's easy for us to find stuff that we're good at and then ignore everything else. And I think that was definitely the case for me. Mm. To become a well-rounded chiropractor. Yeah, well, just, just to understand that it's not all about one thing. Well, that, that was for me anyways, because I became really, like, especially in first year and second year, I was, like, hyper-focused on, like, oh, I need, to, I need to learn this, and then I ignored everything else. Mm -hmm. Like, whether, whether it was that week I was focusing on academics or that week I was focusing on practicals or, I don't know, the, the physics of an X-ray machine, I would solely focus on one thing, and then I would ignore everything else, and it became a bit of a vicious cycle for me, so... If I was to say it to myself in first year and second year, I would say just, you know, take in everything and not put so much pressure on that one thing that you're trying to work on that week or whatever it might be. Mm. I think you'll be surprised as well about how many other people will have a similar mindset and how their brain works. Because yeah, it's interesting how you said that, because that is exactly me. I would, yeah. if I had four exams coming up or whatever, I would have to spend like the first week just doing I don't know, biomedical sciences, then the second week doing 
um, neuroscience. Like it wouldn't, I can't have my hands in different pots. I can't, yeah. I can't read more than one book at a time. I have yeah. to go through books one at a time. And basically by the time I get to the end of a book, I'm like, out of all these other books that I want to read, which one do I want to pick next? And so <laughs> that's how my brain works. And I'm not academic. I'm way better yeah. with my hands. I had to beg, steal and borrow to basically get through university academically. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I pride myself on the ability that I'm, always striving to be the best the most artful chiropractor and i yeah. carl and i touched on this a little bit as well it's no offense to anyone else or other chiropractors out there but my goal is to be the best chiropractor in the world and that should yeah. be every chiropractor's goal 100 if i take it personally that you think you're gonna be you want to be better than me and i want to be better than you like we should be spurring each other on to become the greatest yeah like instead of being like, oh well, I'm better than him and I'm better than them, blah, 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 blah. Um awesome. So just well, go on. Just what one more thing before like just before you go on, just touching on that about trying to be the best and everything like that. What the first seminar that I went to was a centropy se seminar by Pat and Aaron. Now, people mm -hmm. might not know who they are, and if they do, these guys are actually awesome adjusters and they're awesome teachers. So I would always recommend doing a Centropy seminar because I found it so, so good. Yeah. Um, but their tagline is they want to train the best adjusters on the planet. And when I went to that seminar and when they were talking about being the best adjusters possible and, you know, they use loads of metaphors, whether it was, you know, sports or, you know, academics or whatever. If you want to be the best, you have to work harder than everybody else. And I think that really, like, I, I went to that seminar when I was in my third year. And of all the moments, I think that was a pivotal moment for me, was going to that seminar and then just hearing the way they spoke about it and showing the, showing me how to adjust in different ways. It was like a light bulb moment for me. It was like, shit, I want to be the best. And I carry that, I don't know, that bit of an ego with me all the time because yeah. if I'm if I don't think I'm the best, then I'm not doing something right. It's like I used to compete i used to do taekwondo at a relative well it was under 16s but it was a relatively high level if i went into a competition or a tournament or a fight not thinking i was the best i was i already lost like i i would mm -hmm. just turn around and go home but even if i went in because i was a pretty big kid i would be fighting people a lot older than me or a lot bigger than me because of just the, the weight categories mm -hmm. I would have to think that I was better than everybody else or I would get my ass handed to me. And I think when it comes to adjusting, like every time I put my hands on somebody in my head, the little ego in my head goes, you're going to change this person's life or you're the only person that can help this person. So damn it, you need to help them kind of thing. And that's kind of what spurs me on a lot of the time as well. Nice. I like that. The mindset, like mindset is huge for everyone. And I'm the yeah. same. I, when I have hands-on experience with people, I just, it sounds a bit cringe sometimes when I say it out loud, but I basically just say, like, I try and express innate as much as I can. Like there is innate, yeah. there is an innate intelligence within us is what I say. Yeah. Yeah. And I just say that in my head, I didn't say it out loud. But I say this while I'm adjusting people in my head and I just find it helps me because I, it's then that's my purpose. My purpose right now is to adjust that purpose, that person and have them express their truest potential of innate as they can. Yeah. And finding that sort of that phrase that you personally use, I think is quite key. It's quite grounding because, yeah. you know, I notice a difference when I'm adjusting with purpose and without purpose. And it happens sometimes you lose you lose track sometimes your partner's like oh can you quickly just adjust me and it's like <laughs> i can't quickly just adjust you that's not how it works uh, like, yeah. um but sometimes you do just move the bone quick and it's like god did i do that as best as i could and it's that mindset it's making sure that you're in the room you're present with that person yeah. it, it's really something to work on like self uh, making sure you're happy in yourself first before yeah and it's a constant thing that you're working on like you never just you don't yeah. learn it and then you have it like you're constantly working on being present when you're adjusting and like all this stuff that 
for a lot of these students that are listening will come with time and everything but it's again it's that whole thing of just understanding that you're not going to be perfect when you come out of school and you know things will get so much better once you get hands-on once you get experience like um one of our our lecturers said to me that you can do all the seminars and all the training in the world and you should when you're a student one because it's cheaper but also because you have the time but there's no replacement for experience like there's no substitute for actually hands-on experience with clients with patients adjusting as many people as you get your hands on when that happens and like the learning is just exponential from there like you grow so much mm. when you finish so like everybody that's you know struggling through chiropractic school and like the fun starts when you finish like it's hard and everything like you need to work hard to get your degree and to get that little piece of paper that says you can call yourself a chiropractor and then the real learning begins but it's fun learning at that point you know yeah lovely man well thank you so much i think that's a really nice place to wrap it all up yeah. um thank you so much for coming on the podcast i hope people have got something from today i have it every time i speak to someone it gives me an extra bit of a push i don't know i just like it's a bit of a fire in my belly i hear what other people are doing and i'm like god lewis up your game like what is going on these guys are like on another level and so it's really great it helps me and i'm hoping it helps a lot of students um yeah. if people want to get in touch or even come observe we might have people listening in scotland or joining the scottish college of chiropractic which is soon yeah. to open up next year i'm quite excited about yeah. how, how I'm, can people I'm get how could people get in touch with you like is that something that's that's doable? yeah well i mean anybody can get get to me on facebook or instagram i i'm not very good with social media so it's all just my private accounts but anybody just add me online or have a chat or i don't know i'll, I'll put my email into this thing so lewis can pop it on the tag and anybody can send me an email if they want to Lovely. Um, thank you no worries um but yeah i'm at the alba clinic up in dundee so we are always pushing for students to come up I mean, my, my boss is the same. He, he would love to have as many people as he can come up and observe. So anybody that wants to come up, just send me an email, even send the clinic an email, mm -hmm. um, and then we can get that set up. Uh, I know that Dundee is pretty far from for a lot of people, but it's a pretty cool place to practice. So if anybody wants to see how, how we work, you know, just give us a message, give me a call, come on up. Lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, and so thank you very much again for everyone for listening. Thank you so much for dr sean chan for coming on the show and um we'll see everyone again next time thanks bye